Hello and welcome to Robo. Today we are going to make IoT water level indicator. By using this project, we can view the water level from anywhere in the world. For this, we are going to use one ultrasound sensor HCHR04. So what this sensor will do, it will emit ultrasound and the sound will reflect from the water level and will be received. So in this way, we can calculate the distance using our program and we'll get to know the water level in the tank. So we, are, we will not just measure the distance of the water, the level of the water, but we'll also send it to a cloud platform called Blink. So Blink is an IoT cloud platform that will store our data and also helps us to visualize the data in the form of gauge. So we can view the water level in the form of a visual representation from our laptop and also from our mobile application from anywhere in the world. So isn't that cool? So let's get started. So first we will make the connections, the hardware connections of HCSR04 which, with ESP module. So that's all the connections. And how this sensor works is that when the trigger pin is given a pulse of 10 microsecond, what happens is this transmitter sends ultrasound and this, it bounces off the surface and it again hits the receiver. So when it hits the receiver, for that time the echo pin stays high. So the duration of time for which the echo pin is high will give us the time for which the sound travels to the object and bounces back to the receiver. So in this way we can calculate the distance, right? Because speed is equal to distance upon time and we can get the distance by measure, multiplying speed with time. So distance is equal to speed into time. We know from physics that the speed of sound is constant, like 340 meters per second in air. So we can multiply the speed with the time it takes for the sound to reach the object and bounce back to the receiver. And in this way, we can uh, get the water level of, in the tank. So we have made the connections. Now the next thing is we have to create a Blink account. So we have made the connections. Now we will create a Blink account. So for that, we have to visit the Blink website. So I will type here blink.io, I will directly go to the main website blynk blink.io, that is the name of their website. And when you will go to their web page, they will on the, so this is the web page of Blink and on the top right corner you will see login. So once the account is created you have to log in but now you have to click on start free. So once you click on start free, you will be directed to creating your account. But right now already I have created my account. So all the steps of creating account are given in the blog link is in the description. So once the account is created, you log in and you create a blink template. So I've already created one template here. So to, how to create a template that is also given in the blog. Link is in the description, go through the blog. So once the template is created, now I will open the created template that I have created. Blink will give you a template ID and template name. So that you have to copy because further we are going to use it in our code at the top of our code. You have to use this credentials given by Blink. So once we create a Blink account and a Blink template, we can use the Blink's function in our code. Okay. So Blink provides us various functions like virtual pin and virtual write so that we can write to their server okay using arduino id of course so once that's done once the account is created we have created a blink template now it's time to create a blink device so before creating a blink device we need to upload the code so i'll open the arduino ide go to file first we have to download the blink library so click on here library manager and you have to search for Blink library. You type here Blink. And the first library, Blink by Waldomir Shemansky, you have to install that. And I've already installed it. Once it's installed, then you can use all the Blink functions. Okay. So once the library is installed, the first line is template ID and template name. So you have to replace this with your template ID and template name which is given to you by Blink. Then you have to, yes, this is all the common things. So from where did I get this? Okay, 
So you have to go to file, you have to open examples and you have to go to blink and then, then you have to click on blink.agenet. Okay. So blink.agenet here you can see agenet ESP8266 because we are using ESP8266. You have to select agenet ESP8266 and that will open up a code and this code contains many header files you can see along with our main file there are many header files of .h in this code that are very important so don't delete those header files so agenet esp 8266ino so you can see here blink agenet blink state .h config mode .h so all these header files are very important they are made by blink so don't delete this you have to upload this to the board along with your main code so here you just have to copy this basic setup code and uh, you have to modify this code okay so after so what you do is the code is provided in the, the code is provided in the blog link is in the description what you do is you just copy the code okay from this you just copy the code and and in the example, you just replace the agenet ESP826.ino code, just replace that with the copied code. That's all. Wait. You have to delete the code first and then you have to replace it with the code. And once it's replaced, now you are ready to upload the code in the ESP module. So I'll explain with the code line by line. First, I have defined the Blink template ID and template name. So copy your template ID and template name, which Blink gave you and you just paste it at the top of your code. And then everything remains same that you get from the example of Blink. Then you create a trigger pin variable and assign it 12 because you have connected this module to pin 12, right? Trigger pin is connected to 12 and echo pin is connected to 14 and give it a constant int data type then the sound speed variable will store the 0.034 which is centimeters per microsecond the speed of sound is 340 meters per second but if you convert it into centimeters in microseconds then it will give us, give us 0.034 centimeters per microsecond then we add the duration variable and distance centimeter variable then we define a function called timer so this function will be called after every uh, one second and after every one second we will write the distance that is the distance of the water from this sensor we will write it to the virtual pin of the blink then we will give, give a delay of 1000 in the void setup we will write serial.begin115200 we will set the trigger pin as output echo pin as input and then we will start the timer so after every one second the timer functions will will be called so the timer my timer will be called after every one second and then we will start the agenet function blink agenet dot begin and then we will give a high to low pulse as i said as i explained to you that in the, the trigger pin requires a high to low pulse of 10 microseconds so once we give that 10 microsecond pulse then the duration is of the echo pin so the time the echo pin stays high that we have to get and that is the function which we so this function pulse in is used to get the duration of the echo pin so the pulse in function measures the duration for which the echo pin is high and the duration is now used to measure the distance so the distance is equal to duration which is the time multiplied by the speed and why we divide it by 2 because it takes the sound to reach the object and again reflect back so we don't want it is the time is 2 2 times but we want only this this distance right so we don't want the time it takes to reach come back right so that's why we divide it by 2 because half the distance we have to divide the time by 2 so that's why 
we are multiplying it by speed and dividing it by 2 so that we will get only the distance okay then distance we printed on the serial monitor and we call billing.hnet.run and in this way this program works so after every one second the value is updated to blink cloud platform so we have created a blink template for now now let's create a data stream so the data stream is actually the variable the space which blink gives us on their cloud platform to store the data so we'll click on add create edit new data stream So I'll show you, you have to fill all these names. So you have to create a virtual pin data stream. Everything is given in the blog, link is in the description. And once you create a virtual pin data stream, you have to enter the name. The pin is V0, right? That's why in the code, we have written here V0, right? So you're writing it to V0 every time after one second. And the data type is integer because we're uploading number, right? The numbers are nothing but integers. Unit is centimeter because we are getting the distance in centimeters. Then the minimum is zero. So the maximum range of this sensor is four meters, which is 400 centimeters. So that's why I've written the maximum range 400. Then I go, then I hit the save once the virtual pin is created. Now this data stream is in the template. Okay, I have not created a blink device yet. So the blink device I will be creating using uh, Android application of Blink. So the Blink app is free on Play Store. You can download it. Right now this board is not generating its own hotspot, right? Because this is a ESP module. It has its own network. So I will upload this code, which I just now explained to you. It's done. Now what we will do is open the serial monitor. And I will click on reset here. So I have connected to my home Wi-Fi network. Okay, so it's now connected to the Wi-Fi network. It's trying to connect. Yes. So, so first you have to set up the Wi-Fi connection. So this device must be connected to your home Wi-Fi, right? So every time you power this device, it should automatically connect to your home Wi-Fi and start updating the data to Blink server. So once you create, once you open the Blink app, you click on add new device, click on find nearby devices, click on start, click on continue, and you click on this wireless settings. And here you will find Blink IoT water level indicator and some code displayed. So that represents this. Okay, so this is now creating a hotspot which is detected by this app. If you click on this and it will connect to our ESP module. So once that connected, now you need to define the network to which this board should be connected. So I have entered the network. Okay. And I've written the password and then you'll hit on continue. And once that done, it is showing reconnecting back to cloud configuring device that's done then waiting for device online. So now it's waiting for the device to go online. Yes, so once that's done, now our app is created. Okay, now we'll click on finish. And this gauge, you can create it. You can go to settings and you can edit the dashboard here on the app. So you can add the gauge, you can go to its setting, okay. So if you click on plus, you can see here many tools like slider, switch, Okay, joystick, icon button. So right now I've taken gauge, okay. So you can add one more gauge if you have one more parameter. But right now I will delete this, okay. So this is the gauge that you can see is displaying the distance. And now I'll assign it the virtual pin, right? So I'll click on the data stream V0 here. Okay. 
it's already added and go back and you can see here the distance is displayed and the device is online so this i've created a device on the smartphone but it's also naturally created on the web dashboard so i'll go to here so i'll go to the blink website login and go to the search click on search so you can see here one device is created earlier it was zero but right now you can see one device is created click on that device and you can see here it's also displayed on the screen and also on the smartphone so in this way the distance you can see it's getting displayed on the smartphone as well as on the web dashboard yes now to give you a demo how this works is that imagine this table is water and the sensor is connected to the lid of your tank and the water level is rising okay so right now this the distance from the sensor to the table is 44 centimeters we'll go on lowering the sensor and you can see that the distance is now 30 now it's 27 25 and once it reaches 9 centimeter you can trigger automation to turn on a pump or you can just send a notification from this app itself so this app offers many things you can also set the automation so and also in the code you can set some pin high of the esp model to trigger a relay to turn on a pump so this was just to indicate that once the distance is minimum that means the water is full now you need to turn off the pump so this sensor can be attached to the lid where the water does not contact the sensor so the great advantage of using ultrasound to detect water level is that you can use it with any fluid like oil chemicals even beverages so you can use it in coffee machines juice machines to detect the level of the fluid so in this way this iot water level sensor works i hope you enjoyed this project if you are waiting for such more projects looking for interesting projects and subscribe to Robu for amazing content. Stay tuned with Robu. Thanks for watching.